Okay. Hello and welcome to the GSK Be a Chemist Science in the Summer program. Today's exercise is Be a Color Chemist. So for those of you who have tried Be a Color Chemist, pull out your handy dandy notebook. One of the questions in your notebook is, how were you like a chemist today? You can see pictures of chemists in the field, places for your stickers here. Maybe it was that you asked questions or maybe it was that you worked together with a partner. And then in your notebook, you will see the heart of the program, which is color creators with the cochineal shell and color creators with the butterfly pea flower. Okay, so what is a cochineal shell? If you know, raise your hand. Okay, a cochineal shell is from an insect that lives in South America. It's a natural product that makes a color. And the other one is the butterfly pea flower. I heard from a friend of mine that they make tea out of it. Sure enough, these are the sources of our natural products, the butterfly pea flower, which in your kit looks like this because we parceled it out, and the cochineal shell right here. You can hear it. And in your kit, we gave you some. That's actually quite a generous amount. A little bit goes a long way. And so you're taking the role of a color chemist who's going to make paint out of these natural products. All right. So did you know that before the Industrial Revolution in the United States in America, um, and actually around the world really, how did people make color for their clothing, uh, for pottery, for lots of things? Well, they use natural products. They use things like um, henna and madder. And um, so the colors were kind of dull. They weren't real brilliant until the industrial revolution. But that brought its own problems for a talk for another day. So, how did you do your experiment? Did you enjoy being a color chemist? Let's put up a poll. Did you enjoy being a color chemist? And what part of being a color chemist did you enjoy the most? Being able to test things myself, making new colors, working with Uh, we'll launch the poll. All right, so if you followed the activity guide, which was a virtual adaptation, so this is a unique program actually that our friends from the Franklin Institute created. It's a museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on behalf of GSK, who makes medicines. And they were able to adapt the programming from in-person, where normally I would come to your facility and do the experiment with you, to something that you can do at home with your family or at your community center. So as you see here, it tells you what your goal is. You're a color chemist, you're working for a company that makes paint, paints and inks for artists, and your company has decided to make a set of watercolor paints that all come from things found in nature. You explore two materials and find out how many different colors of paint you can make from them. And your materials, you've got your lab notebook, you should have your own pencil. You get a well plate, 
with the circular indentions. Now I'm going to have to turn the camera to show you these things, all right? Come on, camera. There's our well plate. It's an artist's well plate, kind of like a palette. Okay, I've already got some things mixed in there. So this is your well plate. In one kit, you get one well plate. And as the safety, hopefully you watch the safety and introduction videos first. As the safety video said, you should have a clean lab space to work with. You can set up a tray, which is what I did or you could lay down newspapers or something else to keep your workspace clean. Okay, and I see that we gave you three paper cups, two pipettes. What's a pipette? Did you practice using your pipette? Let's see. I ended up getting myself a water rinse cup. And in science lab, everything should be labeled. So if this is my rinse cup, I better write rinse cup. I know it's backwards, rinse cup. Okay, you should practice using your pipette. So let's move the camera again. To use the pipette which is really great. If you learn how to do this, it's a very basic skill technique for any laboratory. You squeeze the bulb, squeeze, squeeze it good and hard. Then you put it inside, inside the liquid, and then you release the bulb and it fills with the liquid, okay? So practice that a couple times. I'm squirting it back out. Squeeze the bulb, release, it goes in, release, okay? Okay, so that's my rinse cup. And the instructions tell you that you're going to grind up your pea flour or your cochineal using two metal spoons. These are some I grabbed from the programs closet. Now, there's a field of work called ethnobotany or ethnopharmacology. Now, when I say ethno, what does that make you think of? Right. Different people that live in different places. And if I say botany, that means the study of plants. And if I say pharmacology, that's the study of medicines. They would use probably a mortar and a pestle. So this is the mortar and this is the pestle. And they put the pea flower or the cochinia shells in here and grind them up. But since we're not able to send everybody a mortar and pestle, instead, our team at the Franklin Institute found out that you could probably do just as well if you rub together with two spoons. And actually, as you do that, then you put a few drops of water in it. So let's see, which one do we wanna do? The pea flower or the cochineal extract? Hmm. You say the cochineal? Okay, we'll do the cochineal. Now remember your lab safety, no eating or drinking in the lab. Watch out for young, young brothers or sisters or cousins. You don't want them to get a hold of things like this. Although everything here was made safe enough for you to use at home. So I only put three cochinia shells in here. You don't need very many. I'm just going to crush them. Interestingly, I believe this is the same thing that they use to make a lot of different red food dyes. 
If you have an allergy to that, you should not work with this. Okay. And then the instructions say to put a little bit of water in there. I'm going to rinse this pipette in my water rinse cup. Kind of dab it here. I've labeled all of my little paper cups. V for baking soda, V for vinegar, and water here. So I'll grab just a little bit of water and add a couple drops because we're supposed to make a paste out of it. Okay. And then we rub some more until we get a paste. You see how it's making a color? What color does that look like to you? Anybody say brick red or Hmm. Dark red or I don't know. You tell me. Okay. And then we're going to put it in one of these wells. I went ahead and grabbed two kits just so that it would be convenient to show you during the filming, but you only get one of these. So when you're done with one experiment, you can just rinse it out and use it again. You can keep this. It's very nice. Okay, and then it says to get a pipette of water and put it in there. I might just, if you are adept enough, you can do this, but if not, don't worry. Put it on the spoon and rinse that as I go. Of course, these will have to be rinsed before we use them for the pea flour. And just water ought to do the trick. Look at that, it's a very strong color. What color is that now? Kind of a dark orange, maybe? Hmm. Okay, I'll set these aside. So now I have a very dark cochineal extract. Over here, you see this brilliant blue? That's the pea extract. It's just the the pea flowers. I just took the flower part. You see all the green part, I got that out of the way. I just want the blue part. That one flower's worth, I had to kind of smash it. And it made that brilliant blue color. Um, and anyway, so what if we take just a little bit of this cochinia extract, just a little, and put it into the next well. Now I'm going to rinse my pipette in the rinsing cup so that I can use it again. Now what if we add, hmm, what should we add? Just water? Okay, we'll just add water. Clean water, not rinse water. Okay, what color is that? Hmm. If I were an artist, I could probably come up with a name for that color. It's almost a magenta, but not quite. Now, what if instead we take, I'll put one in each well of the empty wells, just a little bit here. Okay. What if we add vinegar? Now the instruction said to add about 50-50 vinegar water. So this is from your vinegar tube right here. And by the way, this is a very nice reusable tube that stands up. We use these in the lab a lot, very nice. Okay, so I'll add vinegar to this one. Don't forget what you're doing because you have to write it in your notebook. So if you need to, you can, if you have a Sharpie or just write it in your notebook here, don't forget what you did. Don't just do a bunch of things in your experiment and not write it down. So I know the wells are different here in the book. That's because we couldn't find the same exact thing that they had in the book when we bought it. So let's see, this is what my plate looks like. And I had the cochinea shell here and then I had the cochinea shell plus 
what was that? Just more water. And here was my cochineal shell plus, what was that, vinegar? Okay. So I'm gonna call this brick red. Do you see me writing? Okay. I'm gonna call the first one brick red. I'm gonna call the second one kind of fuchsia. And then this one here is orange. Definitely orange. Okay, now what happens if you add a base? Vinegar is an acid. It's sour, it's tart. Okay, so this is what I have in my notebook so far. If you add a base. So this is three spoonsfuls of the baking soda that we gave you and then water. So we'll drop it. A little bit more. So now what do I get? Hmm. I might use a toothpick. You've got lots of toothpicks. Use a clean end of a toothpick and kind of stir it. And that looks more purple, doesn't it? Wow, that looks pretty. This looks a lot better than my previous experiment. The one I did before I filmed was here. And that looked really chunky. I think I used too many cochineal shells. Like I said, a little bit goes a long way. I think I used six instead of three. Okay, so now uh, that, looks, that looks fairly purple to me. So I'm going to write cochineal plus baking soda or B makes it purple. Hmm. So what do you think these are? These are some I did previously. That's probably what? It's like this one, vinegar. That's probably what? Hmm, it's just lighter. Must be baking soda. So when in the presence of an acid, your cochineal turns orange. When in the presence of a base, it turns purple. Hmm, very nice. Now, if you had a, an empty can or bucket, you could pour this out, rinse it with water, wipe it dry and start over. I'm going to set it aside now for a minute and show you the other part of the experiment. And that is where we did the pea, the pea um, green, the, sorry, the butterfly blue pea flower. You see here, it's really blue. That's a brilliant blue, very thick. I think I used three flowers instead of one. It says just use one flower. More is not always better. So that's a brilliant blue. When I added baking soda mixture, I got this color. What color is that to you? Maybe teal, but when I added vinegar, I got this color. What color does that look like to you? Is it a pink? Is it a purple? Hmm. Maybe lavender? Yeah. So how many different colors of paint do you think we could make with this for our assignment? Well, you're given some paper. These paper strips are not just regular paper. These are watercolor strips. Uh, for watercolor paint. And what I did was you can use the toothpick or the pipette and drop a little bit of each liquid on. So I'm just going to point with this toothpick. This top one is from the original pea flower. And the next one Let's move them closer together. Okay. Hold on a 
a second. Okay. Here we go. All right. So this top one is from the original pea flower. The next one that's teal is from the pea plus the <clears throat> baking soda. And then that one right there is from the plus vinegar. It doesn't quite look the same on the paper for some reason. Hmm. And then here we had the cochinia, original cochinia. It's kind of brown now. And then, oh my, the cochinia plus the baking soda. Interesting. And the cochinia plus the vinegar. These have been sitting for a little while. Let's try again. We'll do this. And this can make a pretty bit mark. That sure looks orange to me. Hmm. So that's cochinia and vinegar. Mm -hmm. And over here, We've got our new cochinilla that we made. And I'll do that. It's cochinilla with the baking soda. And then I'll go down to the original cochinilla, the one that I just did three shells instead of six. Here. And we'll let that absorb into the paper. This is too much to throw into the rinse, so I just squeeze it onto a paper towel. And we rinse our pipette. What do you think was the prettiest color? Depends on your preference. What do you think looked prettiest on the paper? Do you think you could make some watercolor paints out of these? Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so did you have fun as a chemist today? Yes, yes, definitely. And we want to thank GSK and Cyport and the Franklin Institute for making all of this possible. And again, my name is Heather, or Dr. Kleiner, uh, for those of you who knew me from teaching medical school. But today, we have completed our Be a Color Chemist. I will be doing this again next week, for those of you who have missed it, and we can have some live interactive sessions. Thank you very much. We'll talk next week.